you're part of a dream, you're part of a vision, you're part of a world where we can live and feel safe and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are. Now, I have about five minutes to do an introduction here to tell you about everything we're doing in about five minutes. So I have some teaching aids behind the pedestal here, and I'm going to get them out, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Essentially, I want to summarize the entire concept that we're working here. In the Hawaii State Constitution, Article 11, Sections 1 through 9, and 10 as well, is a document called the Public Trust Doctrine. And in the Public Trust Doctrine, it talks about something called the Public Trust Resources, the air, the water, the land, the aina. And in the Public Trust Doctrine, it says that we are to protect the public trust resources for current and future generations. And if we aren't, if something's happening, if there's a shadow of a doubt that something might be dangerous to sustain the aina, it is to be stopped, examined, and determined whether or not it is safe. So, I have before you two bottles of water. One is just water that we normally would drink, and one I've added a little pesticide and herbicide to. Now, if I were to present these to you and say, drink one, which one would you drink? We'll continue. I have two bags of dirt here, just normal lina, soil. One of them is perfectly clean. Nothing going on, just normal microbes and bacteria and things of that growing in. The other one is laid in with herbicides and pesticides. Now, if I were to ask you to rub your hands in it, let your children play in it, or sprinkle it on your bed and your clothes, which one of these would you do that with? And then lastly, we have our balloons. And in one of the balloons is pure oxygen. And in the other balloon are the vapors from the volatile compounds. You know, when you spray these pesticides and herbicides on the soil, they evaporate. And when they evaporate, that vapor goes into the air. And so in one of these balloons, we've captured that vapor. And in the other balloon, there's just pure oxygen. Which one would you want to breathe? Now, if you had no choice whatsoever, you were forced to drink some of that water, spread some of that dirt on your children and on your bed, or breathe one of those balloons, which one would you choose if you didn't know which one had something in it? I presume you would be very cautious. And you would probably want to test the contents of each one of those. And in science, we call this the precautionary principle. The precautionary principle states that if there is not a suitable body of evidence, we don't have enough information, enough data, that we proceed with caution and we treat whatever it is we are concerned with as if it is completely toxic and hurtful and harmful to all life. And then we gently and very carefully begin to test it to verify whether or not it is. Yet we don't get a choice here on Maui. We have to drink the water that's there. We have to breathe the air that's happening around these fields. We have to experience the dust in our lives and in our homes and in our cars and in our bodies. So... The people of Maui County, five very brave citizens, have come forth with a new ordinance, a new law that is written by the people, for the people, and to be decided upon by the people. Now, the way that works is that they've submitted this law to the county clerk's office, and it is now registered, but to 
put it on the initial it put it on the ballot in 2014 in the general elections here in November 8,500 citizens have to agree and sign a petition that they would like to be able to vote on that so that is the next phase these citizens have put forth the law and now it's petitioning time <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so with this bill, this ordinance, it is a temporary moratorium. In other words, we say stop all the GMO activity, stop all the spraying, stop all of the stuff that's going on until we are absolutely certain it's not going to destroy the land, the air, the water, the children. It's almost as if right now, I mean, how many people either have children or know someone who has children? Now, would you donate one of those children to science right now for unknown experimentation? Would you do that with your own life? Would you just subject yourself to some unknown quantity of type of experimentation. Yeah, do whatever you want and let's see what happens. Essentially, that's what we're living in here. We are one of the largest biochemical and, or chemical and biological test sites in the world. And Molokai, oh my goodness. If you go to shakamovement.org, and you look at the very first video after the main one on top, you scroll and it's right there on the left. You can see what's happening on Molokai. We know what's happening on Kauai, children being born with very rare birth defects, their stomachs being born with their, or their bodies being, being born with their stomachs outside of their body. A rare, very rare heart disease that's specifically attributed to one of the poisons that they're spraying on the land, 10 times higher than anywhere else in the world. This is very real. But finally, we have something we can do about it. Now, I know there are brothers and sisters in here from Monsanto and from various other biotech industries. We'd like to welcome you as part of our Ohana. And we're grateful to have the opportunity to share these moments with you because there's a kind of a couple different, there is distinct differences between those individuals who are visiting us from those industries and the other people who are here. The people from the industry are paid to be here. And the other distinction is that I think it would be safe to assume that the people who are visiting us from the industry um, have one source of information from which they are gleaning their position, and that is their employer. Unlike us, the citizens who have hundreds, if not thousands, of sources of information, the world-leading experts are supporting us worldwide. We have one of them here with us tonight, Dr. Don Huber. You're going to hear so many different things, you know, that comes back is the pushback. What about the farmers? You're going to be hurting farming. And in fact, what we're doing actually protects the farmers. And the reason it protects the farmers, what's happening here? Okay, on the mainland and wherever else they're growing the actual GMO seed, 80% of the seed that the farmers use on the mainland and Canada and throughout the world, 80% of the corn seed that is sold to those people are grown here. Now, on those fields on the mainland for the agricultural business, what they call sustainable agriculture, there's huge problems. See, Mother Nature always has the last word, right? Mother Nature always gets the last bat, they say. And what I mean by that is that they've been spraying these heinous chemicals and what have you, and the plants and the weeds have become resistant to their chemicals. So now we have super weeds. 
And so they throw more chemicals on them. And the weeds just say, ah, whatever, man, bring it on. And so we have these super weeds that won't go away. There's like 20 of them now that farmers, are, they, they don't know what to do. We have 500 new insects that are, insect, or that are pesticide resistant. So what happens, how this law, how this ordinance protects our farmers here is that if we keep letting this GMO go on, eventually we're going to be getting some super weeds. You see, because they're testing here with new chemicals so they can take them over to the mainland and elsewhere and spray them there to kill the super weeds and kill the super bugs. And so our, our bugs and our weeds are going to become resistant to that. And so then our farmers who are organic or our farmers who are conventional farmers will no longer be able to use the techniques they use now, and they will have to use stronger and stronger and stronger till eventually they'll have to grow GMO because it's the only thing that you would be able to grow inside those chemicals. So don't let anyone fool you that we're hurting farmers. We are protecting farmers. So what we're going to do this evening is I'm going to introduce the five citizens in just a moment, and then after that, we're going to watch a little video, and then after that, we're going to have Dr. Don Huber speak, and then after that, we're going to have a little question-answer section, and then after that, we're going to talk to you about the petitioning process, because we need more than people just signing the petition. Those of us who are here today, we'd like to encourage you to become petitioners, actually take a petition. You know, if we have 50 people, just 50 people, getting petition signed, it takes five people a day for the next month to get all the signatures we want. If you get five signatures a day for the next 30 days, with 50 people, we'll get all the signatures we want. So we would like to really invite you to consider the fact that you have an opportunity, and in fact, not even an opportunity, you are right now world history. Sitting in those chairs. You know, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? This is a very peaceful, loving campaign. We have every intention of just standing with truth and real science. And as you'll hear Dr. Huber see, um, speak this evening, you'll find that... Um, the information that is given by the industry, I'll just say it point blank, and sorry guys who work for them, I mean, but the truth is everything you see in the paper and on the TV and all of it, I mean, it's basic propaganda. It's not even close to true. It's, it's, the words are skewed, the information is skewed, and you know, a scientist for years have been saying, give us the raw data. Just, just give us the data from which you make your assumptions on or your conclusions on, and they won't provide it. 32, or 26 of the top scientists in the world were hired by the EPA to do an evaluation on GMOs. After three years, they gave up because the industry wouldn't even give them the material so they could test. And on and on and on. There's a whole slideshow here you're going to see about it tonight. So it's up to us. It's up to us to save the keiki. It's up to us to save the aina. We are the ones we have been waiting for. And so now the time has come. So without further ado, can I have you all on your feet to welcome these five brave citizens bringing forth this new ordinance. And let's have a round of applause. Come on up, guys. We have Mark Sheehan. Leo Hu Ryder. Alika Ate. Bonnie Marsh, and Dr. Lauren Pang. <laughs> 